Have you ever noticed that man on the cell phone behind home plate? He's Scott Boris, the man they call baseball's super agent. In baseball, the game's trying to beat you up. It's trying to kick you out, because that's, that's what the game does. Take a closer look at the man baseball insiders believe has had more impact on the game than any non-player in three decades. His level of preparation in packaging his clients is unparalleled among sports agents. Boris fights to get his clients what he believes they deserve, and usually wins. If you're trying to make the negotiation tough, you're not a very good negotiator. With Scott, the stakes are higher because the players are bigger, the money's bigger. Got it. He is the best, folks. Scott gets the most for his clients. It's eye-popping numbers. In the baseball business, whether you love him or hate him, Scott Boris is worth the hype. Our job is to make sure that the revenues of this game, around that 50% model, ends up in the talent's hands. He may be hated by people, but you know what? I know who he's not hated by, his clients. There's a fly ball to right field, and Johnny Damon has hit another one. He cares. He not only cares about us as a baseball player, he cares about us as a person. In this game, you go into war, and I'll take him in a foxhole any day. Well hit, deep to right center field by Veritek. Going, going, goodbye baseball. Scott Boris grew up in Elk Grove, California, 15 miles from Sacramento, doing chores on his parents' 800-acre farm. You would get up in the morning and you would spend literally 12 hours a day on a tractor. I loved to play baseball and yet I had to spend time in the fields. But if you got your work done by 5 o'clock, you still got to go to the ballpark, get those three hours that you uh, thought about all day long. The joy of the day was when the Giants broadcast came on, listening to Russ Hodges and Lon Simmons. San Francisco Giants baseball is on the air. Good afternoon, baseball fans. Lon Simmons along I didn't tell my father that I had my transistor radio with me, and I would wire the transistor radio into uh, the inside of my hat. One particular day, I was working on the farm, and the Giants were playing the Dodgers, and uh, the Giants had fallen well behind and McCovey came up late in the game. One and one pitch. A long drive to deep right field. That one is going back there. McCovey hit a grand slam to put the Giants ahead. And all of a sudden, the tractor had turned sideways, thrown me off, tipped over, and then it was, I was, I was out. I had awakened where, where someone was nudging me. My father squished that transistor with his bare hands. There was no defense because you were, you were listening to baseball uh, rather than paying attention to uh, uh, your father's farming work. But Major League Baseball in person was even better. His first trip to Candlestick Park at age 16 cemented his love for the game. I could not believe that a baseball field could be so uh, pristine. It was so perfect. Watching Willie Mays, wow. My dream was, was well seated. I wanted to be able to help my family, but I didn't want to do it going back to the farm. Boris took the work ethic of the farm and applied it to playing baseball. Jerry Krasnick is an author and covers baseball for ESPN. He was driven, and the coach said to him, well, if you want to be a baseball player, you have to show up each day at a certain time, and if you want to play infield, I'll hit you ground balls, and..." We'll see what happens. And Boris just showed up every day. That's sort of the driven mindset that he had even as a young kid. When schools started calling and offering scholarships, my mother didn't quite understand what that meant because no one in my family had gone to college. It was glorious. You could actually go out and, and play the game for five, six, seven hours. 